Hola! Welcome to the Coastal Kitchen. I'm Karen Mashures, and today we're going to be celebrating Cinco de Mayo with our show. Today we'll be making chicken enchiladas, personal taco salads, flan for dessert, and we're gonna fiesta like there's no manana. So let's get started. Okay, what I've got is a roasted chicken and you can roast it at home or if you want to, you can go buy one of those rotisserie chickens at the store and make this real easy. So I'm gonna take about two and a half cups of shredded chicken. Just shred it with a fork. You can use two forks and, and shred it, no problems. Okay, chicken is in. Now, I'm going to season this with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper before I put my other ingredients in. Nice, fresh, cracked pepper. Okay. Now, one can of cream of chicken soup straight in. We're gonna put in some chilies, and if you want straight green chilies, you can, but I've got chilies with tomato. I'm just gonna slide that right in my bowl. I've got sour cream, and I'm gonna put about half a cup of sour cream in here. So, about three tablespoons. All right, let's give this a stir. The spices we're going to use are some chili powder, some cumin, and some garlic powder. Let's get that all mixed in. All right, now it's time for our black beans. I have taken a can of black beans and rinsed them, and we're just going to put all those in. Make sure they're well drained. This is a fun dish that you can have the kids help with, too. All right, our last ingredient for the filling is cheese. Now this is the Mexican four cheese blend and it's got some Monterey Jack in it, a little bit of cheddar, some queso, and some asadero cheese. So about a cup in here and we're going to reserve this for the topping. Give it a good stir. All right, this looks great. Let me set this back over here. I'm gonna move a couple of things around because I need to make room for my pan. I've got a 13 by nine and I've lightly greased it. And I'm just gonna set that right there. I'm gonna get my tortillas and we're gonna take one at a time and I'm going to grab a spoon here and we're going to put some filling in the center. And you don't need to overfill these, but you need to have a nice amount. Just keep it a little bit away from the edges. And we're going to roll up. Just bring your first piece over the top little bit on each side and angle it in a little bit so you can roll it over and we're going to put the seam side down right there and we're just going to keep on making until we've got a pan full. Alright, last one. Let's get this baby in here. All right, 
Got them all in. Makes 10 nice size enchiladas. All right, let's get this out of the way. And I'm going to take my salsa and I'm just going to pour a little on each one just over the top. All right, just about got all the red sauce on. Let's just put a little bit more on this last one. And I'm just going to spread it out. And let's get a little more right there. This is one of those things where you can put as much as you want on. I'm going to take some chili verde too and I'm just going to put a teaspoon on top of that. Alright, let's drizzle a little bit over here. Okay, we are ready now to put this in the oven. It's going to go um, in 350 degrees. I'm going to sprinkle the rest of my cheese on the top. All right, nice and cheesy. And we're good to go. So let's pop this in the oven. And that's going to be nice and bubbly when we get it out. We're going to take a short break, hear a word from our sponsors. We're going to come back to make our flan. Most people couldn't fit 200 local farms on their table. Well, that's where we come in. For the very best of everything local, Lowe's Foods. Welcome back. We're getting ready to make our flan. Let's turn this on, and I want it on a medium-high heat. Get this pan a little bit warm. Make sure that you're using something that holds heat well. And this is a real easy recipe. There are only five ingredients. It takes time to cook, time to cool, and time to stay in the refrigerator, but it's a very simple dish, delicious dish. All right, I'm going to put a cup and a half of sugar because I'm going to um, make a large flan and I'm going to use ramekins and make individuals. So what we're going to do is we're just going to let this sugar start to caramelize. You don't have to touch it right now. It will start to melt and become a beautiful amber color. So we're just going to leave it set right now. I am going to grab a wooden spoon in case I need it near the end, but let's watch. Now take a look, you can see the edges are starting to turn a golden brown and what I want to do now is turn this down on low and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a stir. It's starting to liquefy and that's exactly what we want. Just don't want it to get too dark. You can see the golden color coming out now. Alright, let's just spread that back out and let it Keep right on cooking. Okay, let's turn this off. You can see what a beautiful brown this is. Okay, we've got to work quickly. So I'm going to pour about three quarters of what I've got in my pan. And you can see I'm just going to swirl it around. It's very hot, so make sure that you do not touch it, but I want an edge coming over the flan and this will start to harden just about one minute. Okay, lovely coating on the bottom and I'm just going to set this aside. Now let's grab a tablespoon here. Uh, the one thing about this caramel sauce is that if it hardens up you can reheat it but be real careful when you do. All right, a nice tablespoon and a half. And you can see how, just turning around the ramekin, coating the whole bottom and a little bit up the sides. 
I'm going to finish these and start to make the custard. All right, last one all done. Now let's make our custard. This is really, really easy. I'm going to take six eggs and get those in my big bowl and we're going to give them a nice whisk. And we want to use um, our arm during the whole making of this custard because we've got to keep whisking as we're going. Alright, I'm going to put in two cans of evaporated milk. So got one out already and we're going to keep stirring. Alright, put number two in. And this is the only part that we've got to stop. We've got to put in a can of sweetened milk. Sweetened condensed. All right. Make sure we get that in really good. So we've got evaporated milk, two cans, and sweetened condensed milk. All right, half a cup of sugar. Just keep right on whisking. This smells so good. Custard is a wonderful dessert. And now, one teaspoon of vanilla. And just make sure you use pure vanilla extract. All righty. This is just about ready to go. Okay, this looks wonderful. We've got the sugar all incorporated in there. Now it's time for me to grab my dish. And this is beautiful. It's hardened and it even looks like it's part of the dish. Okay, now all ready for our custard. I'm going to grab a ladle. You can put this in a uh, pourable container. Hear that crack? That's exactly what it's supposed to do. Alright, we're going to fill this right up. Okay. Let's get this one done first. I have got a great big frying pan and this sits beautifully in here and I wanted something that I could maneuver easily. So if you've got a great big baking dish when you're using something as big as this, um, you can use a glass pan. I am putting some hot water all right, looks like I've got enough hot water in there. Let's get this into my oven. 350, and it's going to be in there for about an hour. Uh, we are going to check it at about uh, 50 minutes to make sure a knife comes out clean. If it doesn't, leave it in for the 60 minutes, and it depends on your oven because some cook a little bit quicker than others. So we're going to let that go. We're going to come back in just a minute. We're going to do our personal taco salad and get our enchiladas out of the oven. ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Holden Brothers Farm Market in Shalot for supplying the fresh produce on this week's show. For over 25 years, the Holden Brothers Farm Market has specialized in the freshest locally grown produce on their 250 acres in Shalot. Swing by their indoor market located near Mile Marker 10 on Highway 17 or check them out online at HoldenBrothersFarmMarket.com. Welcome back. Let's get our enchiladas out of the oven. They are done. 
Okay, I'm gonna set that right there and close this real quick. I'm gonna keep this oven at 350 because we're gonna start on our taco salads. Now these are personals and I've already started. Um, let me show you what we're doing. Okay, I'm taking olive oil and I'm gonna brush both sides. Just a nice coating. And the way we're making our personal size salad shells, there's two different ways. I wanted to show you both of them. The first, I've got a giant muffin pan and all you do is push it down, let it make some folds, and give it a little bit of a flat bottom. So press it down and put it there. All right, you can see that this one, and it looks like I don't have enough room to make four, but I'll show you how we do it. Let's just go ahead and get this all oiled. Okay, what we have done is taken your tortilla shell and just a regular size muffin tin and press it in between four cups and it makes a different shape. So you've got two different shapes there. You can um, make them the way that you like it and we're going to put them in the oven 350 for about 12 minutes. So let's grab them both. Pop them right in. And while they are cooking, we're going to start with our meat mixture. Okay, let's turn this on. I'm just going to take a little bit of olive oil, put in the bottom of my pan, just a touch. and swirl it around, just let it get a little bit covering. And then we're gonna throw our meat in. I've got about two pounds of hamburger meat right now and we're gonna let this just cook brown nicely. I'm gonna put just a little salt and pepper in there Let's get this going. Now, you can cook some onions with this also. And if you do, then put those in the olive oil first and get those just a little bit brown. Uh, some people can't eat onions, so on this dish, I'm leaving them out. And we're gonna let this cook just a, few minutes, as soon as it starts to get a little bit brown, I'm going to use some packaged taco seasoning and season the beef as it browns with half a package. Okay, the meat is cooked thoroughly. Now I'm going to take this off and turn this down a little bit and I'm going to take my strainer and I'm just going to strain some of this fat and grease off. Okay, that's good. And I'm just going to put that right back in. All right, now it's time for our taco seasoning. And I'm just going to sprinkle You can make your own taco seasoning if you want, but this store-bought really is pretty good and it does the job. All right, I'm gonna put this on low as I can go. Just wanna keep it nice and warm. And I'm gonna let it brown just a little bit longer. All right. 
I think it's time we looked at our shells. It's about time for them to come out. Oh, they are ready. This is wonderful. Want that nice brown crispy look. And it's ready to go. Let's just set these over here. I've got my refried beans on and just want to make sure this meat is nice and brown. Alright, that's doing wonderful. Now I've got refried beans on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this taco seasoning, the other half of the package, and I'm going to sprinkle it right in these beans. I think I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Just give it a nice stir. Let these warm up. And I added about a tablespoon of water to the mix because I like the beans to be just a little bit softer than they are when they come directly out of the uh, can. Alright, we're going to let that cook a minute. Let's get a plate here and I'm going to take these shells out of the tin. They're crispy on top, they're soft in the middle, and they're just about ready to get filled. All done. Let's get this in the sink. I'm going to turn off my meat. Just give it a nice little stir. Right now it's going to continue to cook for just a few minutes. We've got a couple other things we're going to do. Let's move this out of the way. I need my big bowl. And I have a block of cream cheese. We're going to put that block of cream cheese right in the big bowl. And sour cream. Two cups. All right. Now, electric mixer and just blend it to where it is completely incorporated. looks good. Now, I'm going to let this set for just a minute. All right, let's get that flan out of the oven. It should be about ready. Oh, it's hot. Put that right there. And let me do a little test. Knife comes out clean. We're good. Okay. I'm going to take this out of the water bath because I do not want it to cook any longer. So let's transfer this back over here. Okay, nice and hot, watch out. We're going to let this cool for about an hour, then it goes into the fridge for at least an hour. I like to keep it about four. So this is a dish that you make the morning of or the night before. I'll show you how to plate it in just a little while. Okay, beans off. Let's give them a nice little stir. Get everything close. All right, I'm going to take my first shell and what I'm going to do is grab a little bit of meat mixture. Just about fill up a little bit more than a tablespoon. Want about a teaspoon or two of the refried beans. Let's put this right here. 
I'm gonna get some of my sour cream cream cheese mix, put a dollop of that on top. I'm gonna throw some cheese on the top. Of that, I like all sorts of goodies. Let's throw some lettuce in there. Nice shredded lettuce. Just put it right on the top. A few tomatoes. Just diced and let's get some black olives. Little salsa. And can't resist a little more cheese, can we? And my favorite, jalapeno. Okay, this is a great party snack. It's nice and compact, looks great with our enchiladas. I'm gonna put all these together. We're gonna come back and take our flan out. The best part about this kind of dish is you can make it the way that you like it. So you can put all your toppings out and even let your guests make their own. All right, we'll be back in just a minute after we have a word from our sponsor. Most people couldn't fit 200 local farms on their table. Well, that's where we come in. For the very best of everything local, Lowe's Foods. Welcome back. I have gotten everything set up for a little buffet, all with our Fiesta Mexican. Let's take a look real fast. Enchiladas, the little taco salad off to the side. Got refried beans here. Everything that can be put out that you might want to have on your Mexican dish. Now, I'm going to show you how to plate the flan. I've got that over here, the big one, but let's do one of the little ramekins. Just take a butter knife or a flat dinner knife and go around the edge of the ramekin. Just nice edge. And give it a little jiggle, just a little jiggle. And we're going to take the plate and put it on top, flip it over, little jiggle. All right. Look at all that wonderful caramel dripping down the sides. You know, you might want to just take a little strawberry and put on the side or any kind of berry that you'd like. Cinco de Mayo is a wonderful reason to have a lovely fiesta of all this wonderful tasty food. Just remember, you can find the recipes and find us on Facebook. Search for the Coastal Kitchen. Now, I've got to have a little bite of this flan and let's celebrate Cinco de Mayo. ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Holden Brothers Farm Market in Shalot for supplying the fresh produce on this week's show. For over 25 years, the Holden Brothers Farm Market has specialized in the freshest locally grown produce on their 250 acres in Shalot. Swing by their indoor market located near Mile Marker 10 on Highway 17 or check them out online at HoldenBrothersFarmMarket.com. Most people couldn't fit 200 local farms on their table. Well, that's where we come in. For the very best of everything local, Lowe's Foods. Stay connected with your community channel. Like ATMC TV on Facebook today. ATMC TV works hard to bring you the best in local programming for Brunswick and Columbus counties. Our goal is to provide local programming that is interesting, informative, and entertaining to the residents of our area. ATMC TV also offers all their information at ATMCTV.com. Find out when your favorite shows are airing, watch current ATMC TV episodes, check the local bulletins, or even submit a public service announcement about your organization. Be sure to check us out on the web at 